The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. Did you hear that? It seemed awful quiet on this side. Maybe we can get to figure out why that is. Uh, options. Uh, system. Okay. Lines are there. I don't know. DM. Nope, whatever. Hopefully it sounded okay. Eh, a little awkward. Uh, anyway, don't know why. It, did everybody hear that okay? We'll have to find out later. Uh, anyway, they were up 26 and a half points on the S&P cash. Dow's up uh, 152. Nasdaq's up 92. Russell 2000 up 18 points. Crude oil up 12 cents. Uh, when we looked at some of the other commodities, gold, it's up uh, 80 cents. Silver up uh, eight and a half cents. So half a percent move in that, but it tends to move a lot more. Uh, than most. So anyway, uh, as we start the show off, um, is there anything that I would really want to say? We talked about far too many shorts on Friday. Uh, I worry about a market when the shorts quit shorting because generally in the past, which is all we have to go by, when everybody quits shorting, that's generally a fairly good sign uh, that uh, we probably don't have any grist for the mill to go higher. Uh, we saw some extraordinary shorting on Friday. And in fact, uh, da -da -da, can I, is that right? Let me see. See if this works. Okay. Here's the uh, put call ratio for Friday. And We'll zoom in here a little bit. Uh, but since uh, 1st of October, when the Fed really went hog wild uh, over everything, uh, we continue to see um, that the equity put call ratio, uh, pretty benign uh, at about somewhere around eh, 3 point, uh, yeah, point, uh, or 33%. Sometimes as a high as 42 percent, but it's pretty much in that range. It's not been, you know, significant. That's this blue line on this chart. Um, the out of the money, uh, which is the out of the money VIX uh, options, uh, those are the ones uh, that you uh, are basically set the price of the VIX. That is how much premium is in those put call ratios. Um, went right back up to, to highs that we saw uh, basically at the end of uh, November before we rallied once again. So I, I think there's a fairly good indication. Of course, I look at the daily short numbers for the actual equities, and I've got a better look. But this is probably the put call ratio from the CBOE is probably the best uh, way of looking at uh, this. Now, I do it a little differently. Uh, the put call ratio could never be, in my calculations, could never be more than 100 percent. A lot of people, uh, and I, the, one of the reasons I do that uh, is that in any kind of uh, formula or model, uh, you can really, or almost all the models, we'll talk about other stuff later, uh, near, near, pretty much me, needs to be uh, scaled from a zero to a one. You don't want anything less than zero. You don't want anything more than one. In fact, for the most part, you don't want something, anything less than 0 0.000001, right? You don't want a zero. So you got to scale these things. Of course, divide by zero is the quickest way to blow up a, a program because you can't divide by zero. 
and you won't be saved by zero, even though they had that horrible song in the 80s. Uh, but uh, every time we've had these, uh, it's led to a higher move in the market. Now, maybe we got it all out of our system today. I don't think so. I suspect that as soon as we got to around 3,200 on the, or when we get to 3,200 on the S&P cash, we're going to see nothing but a torrent of people that uh, have been wrong the last four times they've gone after this market, and they're going to add to it as a fifth. It reminds me of the joke that I cannot tell but I think everybody has heard, and that is the one of the hunter that goes hunting for the bear. Uh, he comes back several times. Uh, finally, the bear says, uh, I guess you really don't come here to hunt, do you? And that's the uh, question I have is, and is when do these guys give up? And it's almost always a great signal to short. We've seen no sign yet that the shorts are, are not ready to die on this hill literally once again. So uh, anyway, uh, beware uh, shorts. They are always the weakest of the hands. And as soon as everybody gets short, it seems like the Fed is more than willing to use them for grist for the mill to go a little bit higher. Uh, now, uh, of course, we normally talk about, if I can find it here, uh, where is it? Uh, talk about uh, volume, so let's get to that. Uh, I've just got a bunch of stuff on my screen today. Okay. Um, not as good as Friday, but I'm not surprised. Uh, we had about uh, 4.7 uh, billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. If you want a link to this page and you're new to TFNN and my show, uh, all you have to do is email me at path, P-A-T-H, at TFNN.com. I'll glad, be glad to see you, uh, uh, send it to you. We have about uh, 1.45 billion shares as we started the show. Um, like I said, well, Friday, about 4.7. We still didn't have enough volume when they came after the market. I think we ended up with like 7.5 billion shares on Friday. Um, we've hit this high several times, and eventually you can chew through a high. We're going to look at some charts today. Uh, we've got a couple of stocks that have actually broken out probably today if they do close higher. Uh, the market, you can make a fairly decent case uh, that uh, after the third time uh, back up at these levels that we do have a high that is higher than the previous high and the volume other than uh, one time before has been significantly higher, at least of the previous times, not the first time. So, um, which was a kind of a blow off top. So I don't see anything changing. I don't see the end of uh, the world. We were talking earlier with uh, Basil Chapman, uh, bringing it up on uh, his show earlier at 9 a.m. And uh, we'll talk a little about it a little bit more. But uh, generally, you want a lot of people uh, that are all euphoric. We have about half and half people that believe the end of the world is nigh. The other people that... Uh, and they're just along for the ride as the market continues to go higher. We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. It is nothing but history repeating, and uh, on this day in 1773, in Boston Harbor, a group of Massachusetts colonists disguised as Mohawk Indians, and I guess, uh, what do you, in 1773, do they have uh, uh, the uh, Halloween, uh, you know, shop down the street where you can get all the uh, different uh, accoutrements that you need? Huh. Do they, do they actually give themselves mohawks? Did they make a fake mohawk? I always wonder. Anyway, the three British tea ships and dump 342 chests of tea into the harbor. The midnight raid, popularly known as the Boston Tea Party, was in protest of British Parliament's Tea Act of 1970, 1773, a bill designed to save the faltering East India Company by greatly lowering its tea tax and granting it a virtual monopoly on the American tea trade. Uh, the low tax uh, allowed the East India Company to undercut even tea smuggling into the Americas by Dutch traders. And many colonists viewed the act as another example of taxation tyranny. And of course, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if there are any Boston people left that would actually do it, do this today? I don't know. They seem to all talk about having higher taxes until you actually give them higher taxes. Huh. We need a little bit more of that patriot spirit out there, Mr. Boston. But on this day in 1773, uh, yeah, the flames, a little ember of uh, freedom coming to the colonies and throwing off the shackles of Mother England. Um, okay, what else do we have going on today? Uh, t -t -t oh, we were talking about uh, we we're talking uh, about I think about shorting. Was that what we were talking about? Oh, we were talking about uh, Basil show. Uh, and man, I don't I hate it when I lose my train of thought and I'm standing on the tracks with a big train coming. The, it, there was a, I, I didn't bring it up too much, but there's an old parable 
And it may be apocryphal, it may be a story made up after it happened. But uh, JFK's uh, dad, Joe Kennedy, a notorious bootlegger and murderer, um, I always wonder if there's a little bit of the sins of the father and what happened to all the uh, sons. Uh, but uh, he, in 19, I think in 1929, said that he sold all his shares of stock. And, of course, he was very rich at the time. He had all that uh, monster uh, uh, alcohol running money uh, and had put it into the stock market and watched it grow. Uh, but his uh, shoe shine guy uh, that was down the street from where they lived in New York, or was it in Boston? Who knows? Uh, anyway, started telling him about what sh shares that he was getting into. Uh, and uh, old Joe said that uh, that was the sign of a top, and he started selling shares that day uh, <clears throat> in 1929 before the crash. This may have been late summer, um, but uh, he did start selling shares, so that isn't uh, that. The question is whether that truly happened or not. Uh, <clears throat> of course, you never really know. A lot of people have a lot of stories on Wall Street. Uh, what it does say, though, is something that I've noticed, and I think everybody else has, and that is uh, when everybody's screaming then you have a pretty good sign of a top. When everybody's talking about buying and selling shares, you got a pretty good uh, thing. When everybody's telling you the end of the world is here, you pretty much have a good low. Uh, but Basil was talking about uh, talking to a group that he was with a few weeks ago, and literally nobody was coming up with people saying, you should buy this or you should buy that. And why we can't use that as an individual data point. Uh, it, we can kind of look at it and put it together with other things that we have. Uh, this is kind of more like a court case uh, where it's the uh, preponderance of uh, the evidence that says whether or not people are euphoric. Uh, but when you don't hear them screaming about highs, then uh, generally that's not a euphoric high. Uh, now, if I, if I was to watch CNBC, uh, as I did at one time, uh, when I didn't like money as much as I did today, uh, the uh, thought is that you could get maybe something from those guys when they're all screaming at the highs. But you know what? As long as this continues, as long as I don't see a lot of people not shorting at the highs, uh, I continue to think that this is a market that has not seen a high. If we see, you know, a month of people screaming and telling everybody to buy stocks and put everything in the stock market and, you know, hawk their house, I'll, I'll really think about a long-term high. I just have not seen it, haven't heard it. Um, I'm pretty good about reading the blogs about what does happen on financial infotainment TV. Uh, I, again, have not seen that much of it uh, politically. Uh, if the elections uh, for 2020 were held today, it actually looks fairly good for Wall Street. Uh, so I do not see uh, anything that would say uh, the otherwise. Uh, there isn't a lot of belief right now that we'd have uh, a uh, <clears throat> eh, anti-capitalist, probably the best way to put it, uh, in uh, the White House and or both uh houses under one rule. Uh, markets tend to really like gridlock for the most part, uh, but uh, eh, us guys out in the uh, unwashed masses, us smelly Walmart shoppers, as uh, one uh, executive in the uh, Justice Department put us, uh, we're not, we could do without it. But uh, what else can you say? Um, okay, um, as we look into what was going on today, I got a lot of charts. I uh, did want to get into one, answer one question. And to, to uh, was that better? Uh, got a type here. Um, I had a question about what's going on uh, in. Uh, 
my machine learning work. Uh, but the, the question is just what is it? Uh, kind of uh, look at this thing as kind of a uh, black hole. It doesn't really um, say what is going on with it. But I, I thought I'd give a, a small demonstration of what uh, happens because uh, this little thing that I'm showing on right now is uh, the uh, all the code, which is uh, it fit on maybe one page, maybe one and a quarter pages with a lot of white space. You could get rid of that, fix it in there. A lot of the comments out, it fit on one page. Uh, but this is the canonical example. Oh, as we go to the break, when we come back, uh, we'll show what this is. And uh, then I'll be able to answer the question about why we haven't seen such uh, huge results uh, at the retail level for machine learning. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. The TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale is back. For two weeks only, we're offering the largest bonuses of the year on all Tiger Dollar purchases. Normally, you can get a 10 to 20% bonus on your purchase, but for the Tiger Dollar Holiday Special, we've doubled the normal bonuses where you can now get up to a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars can be used for all TFNN newsletters, products, or services, are fully transferable, and never expire. If you're a current TFNN newsletter subscriber, then this is a great time to buy Tiger Dollars and apply them to all your future transactions for instant added savings. And if you're considering signing up for any TFNN newsletters, webinars, or products in 2020, then get up to a 40% bonus now before this sale ends Sunday, December 22nd. For all the details and to purchase your Tiger Dollars with up to a 40% bonus, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Anyway, I had a question about why we haven't seen more success uh, with machine learning in the stock market. And there's several answers to that. Um, anybody that's got my newsletter has probably seen the results of buying lows over the last few years. And I've got something that uses kind of the wisdom of crowds that has been a huge boon uh, uh, for confidence in buying lows. There's nothing like uh, having somebody have a loaded pistol uh, aimed at your heart 
uh, to quicken the mind when buying lows or trying to sell highs. Uh, the lows have been uh, uh, fairly accurate uh, for uh, forever in history. The highs have been uh, somewhat uh, tough to find, I'm, although I'm making a lot of success in that in machine learning. Uh, but uh, there, there are several answers to that. One, uh, the ability to spend the kind of money that would be necessary uh, in the uh, previously um, in machine learning for an individual like me, even though I have domain knowledge in two things, programming and uh, the stock market. You need somebody kind of like that. Uh, and again, a lot of the stuff is fairly new. It hadn't been around for 20 years. In fact, some of the, well, I'm going to show you this, which is kind of interesting because it basically came along right when I started uh, learning uh, and trying to uh, find out everything I need to do to start trying to use machine learning in software. Uh, but this is an example, in fact, I'll just run it while I'm talking about it, of a machine learning program. Uh, this thing uses the uh, MNIST database, which is 60,000 examples of numbers uh, in handwriting. And when I started, I think it took about eight to 10 minutes, eh, probably more like 10 minutes in 2015 uh, to actually uh, have a, a, a program learn all of, of those handwritten digits and be able to, to uh, well, let's say you wanted to sort the mail at the post office. I'm going to run the program right now while we're on the air. Did I do it? Come on. Did I do it? P-Y. There we go. Um, this is using uh, TensorFlow from Google. They were the first to really work on handwriting analysis for things like zip codes and that kind of stuff. Although it had been around since the 90s, they were working at much better, uh, trying to find much better ways of doing it. So I can be, in fact, if you look here, it may be a little tough. Uh, this is about 98% uh, accurate, and uh, it took about 11 seconds to uh, go through 60,000 handwritten uh, examples of digits, and then it went through 10,000 and predicted which ones that uh, were right and wrong. And it was 98% uh, correct. We could have uh, played with this a lot more, got it up. They've got it up to about 99.8% correct. That's why most of the mail flies through anymore. Uh, but that I can do this at home, why I'm on the air, tells you a great deal. Uh, and 11 seconds compared to the 10 minutes uh, in the late 2015. The computers are now getting uh, fairly decent uh, at the kind of computational powers you need. Uh, this uh, acceleration was made possible by NVIDIA cards. Uh, I've told a story before, but NVIDIA has been fairly good about supporting uh, mathematical operations with their uh, GPU cards or video display cards and using them for uh, something that they were not intended for. Uh, not playing video games or showing some pretty pictures on the screen, but actually using each one of those GPUs, uh, immense computing power for parallel operations. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's all about how big a byte you can take at one time. Uh, the amount of memory that I have uh, now on my cards uh, is about eight gigabytes. Uh, that's compared to about two gigabytes when I started. So the amount of memory that you can put it, these things, how big a byte you can take at one time is a big issue. Uh, but it is, uh, there are a couple things that are standing in the way of these things being widely adapted. Uh, first of all, you do need somebody that uh, has domain knowledge in both uh, and understanding in both programming and of course in trading. The, one of the problems is the, a lot of the, the stuff that is from machine learning, and I'm going to say 98% of the stuff from uh, machine learning is from PhDs uh, writing theses uh, in colleges. 
And these folks are pretty much expected to use uh, Linux uh, or Unix style uh, boxes uh, because there's no licensing fee and they can uh, share it between all the, the uh, people in that scientific community for machine learning. Uh, the other thing is that they've used, decided to uh, do all the early work on a language called Python. Uh, that language is pretty much used by junior programmers uh, and has a huge problem uh, in scaling uh, to enterprise applications. It's used a great deal on websites, but those things uh, are fairly limited in the scope. They, it does not work very well uh, to those larger programs. Uh, generally, when you find people in uh, the Fortune 500 companies, uh, they'll use maybe Java or C Sharp for Microsoft uh, or a handful of other languages that are more adapted for writing stable programs. Uh, so you've got a lot of people that had a lot of experience. They picked this program, which is now, or this language that's now just kind of become popular, but it's got its own problems. Uh, one, nobody really controls it. So it's kind of like herding cats. Uh, and just to get uh, what I showed you here up and running in 2015 took about eight hours. Uh, it was an example ready to go. And it still took eight, eight hours. It's one of these things where um, even to get something that you know that works is horrifically bad. And that will probably continue for a while. I think the big next change in machine learning for uh, stock markets is someone uh, writing in a better language uh, that's easier to work with. Uh, that's part of it. The other part is that almost everything, because it's written in Python, uh, is a black box. It's very hard to debug, so you don't really see what's going on inside of it. In fact, uh, some of the bigger uh, uh, discoveries or uh, problems that machine learning has busted this year, have at like Go, have been on special versions of uh, the software from Google that actually allows you to uh, at least some uh, to peek in under the hood why these things are running but uh, a lot of problems still exist uh, but uh, i'm on the uh, I, I got the lows figured out now i'm working on the highs and i uh, actually have a fairly decent uh, grasp on those i may be able to get a much better model before i come back uh, in the early january anyway just a little thoughts. Give me a call 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And a question, uh, okay, um, who's this, Pat, asks, uh, what language uh, are you writing in? Depends on what you're talking about. Um, I traditionally write in C sharp and have for the last 18 years. Uh, it's kind of uh, the version of uh, Microsoft's version of Java uh, from Oracle. Uh, Oracle kind of screwed everybody over. So I don't think there's a whole lot of people writing in Java anymore. They've all kind of, it's fairly easy to, to uh, turn everything over to Microsoft and, and C Sharp and the .NET community. Uh, so uh, for the most part, uh, the question I'm bringing, or the statement I'm bringing up is that you can't write a lot of uh, these machine learning programs in whatever you've learned before. You pretty much have to use Python. And why it's free, that's probably the best thing you can say about it, uh, that it has nobody really uh, running uh, roughshod over what happens in the future. It becomes incredibly problematic. Uh, the tools are nowhere good as uh, what you would get from a high-level language from Apple or Microsoft. So there's a lot of hurdles, uh, and since all this stuff uh, is pr pretty much in the public domain. There isn't a lot of money to be made. So you don't find people like Apple and uh, uh, and Microsoft chasing after this stuff. They kind of leave Google and uh, eh, they're kind of the big guys and a few people like Amazon uh, that write stuff for themselves and make it uh, publicly available. Uh, of course, Google's the real leader in that with uh, a thing called TensorFlow uh, which everything that I just ran here uh, is written for. But these are packages that uh, have to be written to with Python. And again, Python has all its issues. Um, and you get kind of spoiled by Microsoft or uh, some of the things like Swift from Apple. Uh, I'm not a Swift programmer, but... A lot of those things just solve so many issues and take care of so many uh, potential issues that you have uh, that prop up or uh, crop up in Python. Python's kind of like uh, uh, the Skunk Works, uh, making you know very sophisticated jets that they're going to make ten of in the whole world or twenty of, right? Like a U2 or SR71, they get it going, but it's not pretty. And it's not something that you want to try to mass produce uh, and also have a lot of software built on. Um, they make do. Uh, it's just not an ideal world. Eventually, someone will come up with something that's really built uh, as a 21st century language. But eh, what else can you say? Uh, a little probably too deep in the weeds for most people. But uh, we'll get moving on here.
Um, I'm going to see. We've got uh, a lot of charts I want to look at. American Eagle Outfitters. Uh, we might be finding some kind of low. Hey, shoot! Back to the sneezing. Um, we'll answer that. Uh, okay. Uh, since I'll get into AEO in a second. So your Holy Grail is still further down the road. Uh, it may be as far down the road as the 1st of January. I'm testing all the stuff for the highs right now. And it's very promising. Uh, but since I've had, it's kind of like the light bulb. I, the, you know, uh, they found a thousand ways not to make one. All they needed to do is find one way to make one. Uh, but uh, I've got uh, uh, something that shows a lot of results uh, that I'll be testing over Christmas. But I think it's there. Uh, before I actually put anything into production or in the newsletter, I have one of my uh, subscribers who's a statistician at a college uh, in Tampa. And he reviews it all. So I didn't make, uh, he didn't find any uh, glaring mistakes that would tell me that uh, I'm doing something wrong. So I, I work at it fairly hard, make my models, and then hand him the data. He goes back through it just to make sure. Uh, that's probably why the lows work so well, is that I had somebody that could go back and uh, check all my work. Uh, he found, uh, like I said, I think about 30 times he found uh, mistakes. Uh, each time the program gets a little bit better, and uh, we may have the same kind of iterate, iterative issue, but uh, I think I got something that works. So uh, it's basically refining it enough to go into production with it. But, uh, you know, anybody that uh, wants to get Tiger Dollars now, check out my newsletter. Uh, every uh, day in the newsletter, I've got about 25 uh, sectors uh, and ETFs. Uh, that have those uh, uh, sector oscillators in there, and you can see how well they pick out the lows and have uh, for the last 20 years. So uh, if you're trying to buy the lows and sell the highs, I have a lot of things that kind of work that I know that have worked for me in the past, but no automated way of buying highs. And uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, trying to sell the high has been been problematic uh, at best this year. Uh, anyway, uh, American Eagle Outfitters uh, got a little doji out here today, uh, but doesn't look that bad. You've got uh, the low back here on September 4th, $13.53 at 26 million shares. Uh, got back into that four days ago on December 11th with uh, not quite half, but fairly close to half that volume. Uh, you got a little bounce out here. You probably get one more uh, low and this thing goes sideways. But uh, man, some of these retailers might be finding uh, lows out here. Uh, to, 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 yeah, either the silver bullet or the, uh, or the holy grail. That's what everybody's talked about finding. And you won't find anything that works 100% of the time. Uh, but you might work, find something that works 70% of the time, and that makes all the difference in the world. And certainly, um, when you find the right stocks, uh, certainly makes a ton of difference uh, out there. Okay, what else do I have? Eh, it's probably pretty close. Okay. Uh, Akamai. Uh, this did break out. It did break out with a sign of strength above the $86 level. Uh, that original first May first high of 2019 came into play. You went above it uh, on what is it, uh, 31st of June, uh, July. Uh, you had some nice volume. You pulled back into the trading range. Um, but the energy hasn't been all that much. You've got a valid breakout, but below the previous high, you pop back above it today. So that would be, you know, anything back above 86.19 would suggest that you're probably gonna go back up to 93 and then 100. 
So this kind of setting up for an ABC higher, but uh, that may take uh, into January. We'll be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and a tech insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we got a question on Boeing. Um, what do we have going on down here? And that is... Uh, possibly the uh, a test, well, actually a test of this gap up that happened on the 22nd of October. Um, am I feeling that uh, uh, horrible about Boeing's long-term future? And the answer is no. I'm wondering if uh, a lot of the articles written over the weekend about the impending uh, Boeing uh, stopping of the assembly line aren't self-serving. If you wanted to get a fairly decent price on Boeing, how much would it cost to pay off somebody? Or we'll say that you're in the company itself and you wanna get uh, options uh, or you're on Wall Street and you wanna buy options. And you come out with a nice story that says they may, maybe they won't. Um, no backup from the company. As far as we know, it's a single source uh, inside the company who may or may not be in the position uh, to actually tell us the truth. Uh, from what I've been doing following it, 
Um, I'd be very interested in watching this over the beginning part of the year. Uh, they get a new CEO at any point, and you're going to get 30 bucks on the day. Uh, this has also kind of formed a uptrend line since the August 15th low. Uh, you've got, uh, what, about five bucks higher on the October 21st low. You now got about five bucks higher on today's low. And the question is, if this thing ba uh, bases out volumes fairly light, I might be kind of tempted to be looking at calls uh, early into next year. Uh, they get the... Uh, they get the 737 Max back in the air, and uh, the hit piece is off. Um, you know, they still got 4,000 planes on back order. So when you can, not when you have to, we will be here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.